This next comment I, I, I know you're going to love. Uh, we have not had her on Shoot Night before, so I'm very excited to have her here. Out from Boston. Please put your hands together for Janet McNamara. Oh! Oh, this is so exciting. This is so exciting. I'm, uh, I'm an accountant. That's my day job. Yeah. That's why I dress like a whore. I figured that had to be addressed off the bat. Yeah. I like being an accountant. Because you tell somebody you're an accountant, conversation's over. No one ever corners you and they're like, hey, what's your style of accounting? It's like, gap, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Generally accepted accounting principles. It's gap or jail, bitch. <laughs> Every once in a while, somebody will try to impress you. They'll try to impress you with their Excel skills. They'll be like, I know the V lookup function. And I'm like, it's not hard. You fucking idiot. <laughs> also, match index is better. Watch a YouTube video. Uh, I'm back in the office. I'm back in the office. You guys are back in school. I'm back in the, are you guys back in the office? Uh, yeah. I forgot how many of them I hate. Uh, like, I was thinking of this today. You know how sometimes when you just hate someone so much? And then you realize they also hate themselves. So it's like, at least they get it. It's like, now I kind of like you. Because we have something in common. Which is that we hate you. I call that joke Charlotte Watson. She works in payroll. And that's her real name. I don't know, for some reason I can't come up with another name. And this is going to be on YouTube. Uh, man, you guys are fun. I, uh, I, I like, I like pass down family advice. I like pass down family advice. The big thing I was always told as a kid, it was passed down all the way down from my great grandmother to my grandmother. I used to tell my mom as a kid. My mom always told me, never look at a man in the eye. That's what my mom always told me. She said, never look at a man in the eye. Because if you look at a man in the eye, they'll attack you. <laughs> I was eight. <laughs> I remember this one time. I remember this one time. Shut the fuck up. I was talking about my mom. <laughs> I remember this one time, I was like walking around the block when I was a kid, and uh, this guy pulled over and he asked for directions. And uh, I gave him directions, and he was like, um, he was like, can you actually get in the car and show me where it is? And I, and I just ran home, and I told my mom about it. And my mom was like, well, did you look at him? You shouldn't have looked at him. And I was like, no, mom, I didn't look at him. So she called the cops. And the cops came, and uh, they were like, what did he look like? And I was like, it was a white guy with glasses. And my mom was like, you lied to me. <laughs> I, uh, oh, man. This fun. I'll, t I'll tell you this. Uh, my dad died a couple years ago, yeah, which is sad, but um, I still like to text him. Right? Or at least I like to text the guy that had this number now. <laughs> and I'll just be like, hey, dad. And the guy's like, I'm not your dad. And that's just what my dad used to say. <laughs> So it's like he's here. You get it? 
because he never was. <laughs> oh, <man laughs> I hung out with my grandmother last weekend, which was fun. I hung out with my grandmother. She told me I was beautiful. Yeah. She was like, Janet, you're so beautiful. Imagine what would happen if you wore makeup <laughs> and you didn't dress so homely. <laughs> I was like, I think I'm gonna stick with just being beautiful. <laughs> Why risk it? It's like makeup makes my face slimy. Why would I do that if I'm already freaking Cindy Crawford? <laughs> she could keep her job. I don't like having my picture taken. Oh man, I, uh, I was paying some of my, my grandmother's bills last week. I was paying her bills. I feel, like, I feel like HIPAA is getting out of control. Do you guys know what HIPAA is? American privacy laws? I, uh, I was paying my grandmother's bills, and she got this hospital stay my grandfather had in July, right? Even though he died in 2008. And, uh, and I called, and I explained the situation to the lady. I was like, my grandfather died in 2008. Um, I had this bill for a hospital stay. And she was like, I can't talk to you about this. HIPAA regulations. Can you put your grandfather on the phone? <laughs> I was like, I don't think you understand. My grandfather died like 12 years ago. I can't really put him on the phone. And she's like, I don't think you understand HIPAA regulations. <laughs> I was like, he, he, he wasn't in the hospital in July. And she was like, I can't confirm or deny a hospital stay your grandfather had in July. Can you put him on the phone for me? And like, we like went back and forth for like 20 minutes. I was like, I don't, I don't know what you want from me. Like I have to pay this stupid $25 bill. And uh, it was like back and forth, back and forth. And then she just kept getting more and more frustrated with me. And like I was getting frustrated. And I'm like, I'm not used to not getting my way, you know, because I'm beautiful. And, <laughs> and it was like back and forth, back and forth for like 20 minutes. And then finally, she got frustrated with me for not understanding. And she was like, listen, I'm sorry to hear about your grandfather, but I'm going to have to speak to him. <laughs> and I was like, all right. You got me. Um, this is Robert McNamara. Um, so I have this bill for a hospital stay I had in July. A crazy thing. I died in 2008. Oh, I just have to send you my death certificate, and this could get taken care of. Whew. Thank God. I don't want to fuck up my credit rating. That was a dead on impression of my grandfather. <laughs> oh man. I, uh, I, I, I used to think I was crazy for a long time. I thought I was like out of my mind crazy because it was like a voice in my head that was like, and I didn't shut the fuck up. And then I told, I told him the shrink about the voice. And my shrink was like, I think that voice is you thinking. And I was like, oh. She's like, what you're describing with that voice is a panic attack. And I was like, ah, fuck. I'm a millennial. <laughs> it's terrible news. If there's anything I know in life, I decided it's that everything I'm not good at is stupid. <laughs> that, that's my new thing. Everything I'm not good at is stupid. Like spelling. Stupid, you know. Like if you know what I meant to say, I spelled it right. So fuck off. <laughs> it's like I saw that red squiggly line when I hit post. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> the other day I was trying to spell epitome, O P I D M Y. <laughs> on on Facebook I was I was trying to say on Facebook I was trying to say Krista Weiss is the epitome of cool. You guys don't know her. She quit smoking recently, so not as cool. But at the time, epitome of cool. And like, I tried it like nine ways. I was like, A-P-I-D-M-Y, O-P-I-D-M-I-E. Like, I couldn't figure out how to spell it. And I ended up just right, I, I just wrote it wrong, because I'm a badass. And um, I, I just wrote it wrong. And underneath, like 30 seconds later, somebody just wrote epitome. And I was like, what the fuck is an epitome? <laughs> and I Googled it. And it's somebody that possesses the quality of a person or thing. And I was like, that's an epitome. <laughs> oh. Epitome says epitome, which means whoever invented that word spelt it wrong. <laughs> I don't even care. Everything I'm not good at is stupid. Cursive, 
you guys don't know what cursive is. It's a dead language. Yeah, they made you learn it in school in the 90s, and then they're like, psych, you'll never need that. Uh, the only purpose of cursive is to read wedding invitations. I just text the bride the day of the wedding. I'm like, where is it? They're not busy. If they wanted me to show up to their wedding on time, they would have put their invitation in English. <laughs> stupid. Oh, man. Everything I'm not going to is stupid. Direction. I, I have a terrible sense of direction. Terrible sense of direction. Like, I get lost playing Mario Kart sometimes. Like, it's ridiculous. Uh, like, you know how sometimes when you're driving, you're on the highway, and, like, you should, you, you should be going... Uh, you should be going east, but like you get on the, you, you're going west, and you don't realize it until like 20 minutes into the trip, and then you, you're like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going around the world. <laughs> <laughs> and then three hours later, you're like, that was stupid. <laughs> I'm in blood love. But like, word of advice, if you ever get pulled over on Route 90 West while driving to the Cape, don't tell the cop you're going to the Cape. <laughs> and no matter what you do in life, don't tell the cop you're going around the world theory, because you'll get a DUI. <laughs> I've had three. Yeah. Pass the breathalyzer every time. Oh, I've, I've, I've gotten three um, of those touch your nose things. Uh, three sobriety tests. It's like I have a hard time. I have a hard time. I get pulled over, and you get pulled over, and you always want to cry. So it's like I see the lights, and I can't cry on demand. So I like rub my eyes to make it look like I'm crying, and then I like rub my eyes, and I'm like only. And then I look myself in the mirror, and I'm like, ah, I'm high in one eye. He's, <laughs> this isn't good. So I like rub my other eye, and then I'm like trying to rub my eyes so it looks like I'm crying. And they came up to my window, and I was like, I'm not high. <laughs> You're going to think I'm high because my eyes are bloodshot, but I just want to let you know that I'm not actually high. And he's like, nobody specifies they're not high unless they're high. And I was like, yeah, they do, you fucking idiot. <laughs> and then uh, you, you get pulled out and uh, you, take a, you take a sobriety test. And uh, don't you do this during the sobriety test. I only did this once. Uh, you, you stand up, you touch your nose, and don't do this. What up now? Don't you feel like a fool? Yeah, they don't. You get pulled into the station. I, I got pulled into the station. I passed the, um, I passed the blood test. And uh, at, at the end, I was like, hey, I passed that blood test. Where's that cop now? And they're like, he went home three hours ago, you fucking idiot. 19-year-old. I, I was 32. I don't know. I always lie about my age in that joke. Oh, man. Oh, man. Life is fun. I'll tell you this. Uh, I don't know what I should... Eh, fuck it. Uh, I, I, I'm not gay. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't told my family yet. Yeah. It's just a weird conversation to sit my mom down and be like, hey, mom, I'm not gay. I'm sorry you read that book when I was in eighth grade, but that book probably should have mentioned that dressing comfortably doesn't make you gay. <laughs> yeah. Dressing comfortably, you, you have to think vaginas look delicious. <laughs> yeah. That's what it comes down to for me. Yeah. I don't think it's an acquired taste either. Yeah. The other way around, men, men are like, I can never be gay. Men are like, I can never be gay. I can never give a blowjob, it's disgusting. It's fine. It's fine. It, it, it's like a finger, you know? Like, it's the same freaking thing. Like, I used to date Irish guys, you know? I could be gay, I'm not sure. Like, I'd, I'd like to have a wife. I, I think a wife would be great, you know? Somebody to cook and clean for me, right? I'd be like, make me a sandwich, bitch. <laughs> I think that's how it works. I don't know, my dad's dead. <laughs> oh man, I'm not gay. I'm not gay, I'm just scared of men. 
I just don't like men that much. I like men as like people. I just don't like having sex with them. Cause like, why? Be better. Oh, that's loud. Uh, fuck it. I, uh, I just don't like having sex. Cause like, I don't know, last time I had sex, I'll tell you this, last time I had sex was three years ago. Yeah. I had sex because I realized I hadn't had sex in three years. So I was like, I'll give it a whirl. I downloaded Tinder 45 minutes later, somebody was at my door. Because that's how being a girl works. And the second we started having sex, I was like, ugh. I should have just watched The Office. It would have been so much better to watch The Office. Because sex is just how I remember. Ugh. Like I remember the first time I had sex, I thought it was gonna be this like euphoric experience. And then I had sex and I was like, oh, I get it. Sex is just like, sex is just like, do you guys fuck? Okay. Catholic school, I'll tell you what it's like so you don't have to. Sex is just a slightly bigger tampon. That's all it is. Sex is just a slightly bigger tampon that just keeps telling you to relax. It's like, I can't, I'm tight, you're stout, get to work, bitch. <laughs> um, I don't know. If there's anything I know in life, if you're gonna have, if you're gonna have sex, don't. You're not 16 anymore, stop it. But like, if you're gonna have sex, morning sex is the way to go. Because with morning sex, like, you have to go to the bathroom either way. Might as well. Somebody told me once after a show, they were like, Janet, I don't think you're gay. She was like, I don't think you're gay. I think you're asexual. I was like, I don't give a fuck what you think I am. Also, what's asexual? She was like, asexual. It's when you're uninterested in sex. You should read a book about it. I was like, no. I'm not reading a book about something I have no interest in. <laughs> Stupid. All right, guys, thanks so much. That's my time. Back to the news. Okay. Janet McNamara, everybody. Janet McNamara. Oh, terrific. Thank you.